Hi, I'm Endemanian, and in this short video essay, I will be discussing the painting Joan of Arc by Jules Bastien Lepage. Jules Bastien Lepage was an artist who was born in 1848 in the French region of Laurent. His parents were farmers and of limited means, and this rural and modest upbringing shaped his artistic output. Of this, he himself said, Nothing is good but truth. People ought to paint what they know and love. I come from a village in Laurent. I mean, first of all, to paint the peasants and landscapes of my home exactly as they are. Indeed, he is sometimes referred to as the painter of the peasants. In his work, he captures moments of labor and ordinary scenes from rural life and renders lush landscapes with extraordinary detail. His work can be considered in both landscape and portrait genres and is defined by both realism and naturalism. Although his life and career were both extremely short, he enjoyed great success and has become recognized as an influential figure that challenged the prevailing impressionist style of the time. And now to talk about the painting with some historical background. Joan of Arc was painted in 1879 and is Bastien Lepage's largest painting. Initially, we were met with an extremely detailed painting of a peasant figure situated on the right who is encompassed by a rich natural scene. This figure is the eponymous Joan of Arc. So why has our divinely connected friend Joan shown up here? Joan of Arc was a peasant girl who, at the age of 13, claimed to have heard voices and seen visions from the Archangel Michael, Saint Margaret and Saint Catherine who inspired her to lead the French army against the English during the Hundred Years' War. Once she had convinced King Charles VII of her claims, she eventually succeeded in helping to secure several key victories for the French. However, she was eventually captured by the English, put on trial for heresy and burned at the stake in 1431. Importantly, in 1870, during the Franco-Prussian War, the region of France where both Bastien Lepage and Joan of Arc came from was taken over and became part of the newly formed German Empire. And by this time, Joan of Arc had become an important symbol of freedom, revolution and of France itself. Bastien Lepage had fought in this war and used Joan within his painting as a figure who both connected a symbol of peasant life and the idea of French liberation and nationalism. The painting depicts Joan of Arc standing barefoot in traditional, well-worn peasant dress next to a tree. On the left of the painting behind her we can see a spinning loom and beside it an overturned stool. A narrative begins to emerge which suggests that chores have been suddenly abandoned and on inspection of Joan's expression we can see that something has taken over her. Her cheeks are flushed red and her upward gaze suggests that her mind transcends beyond the scene. Her bright blue eyes seem at once wondrous but also absent. Bastien Lepage was very concerned with perfecting the young girl's face, and even though this model has been identified as Marie Adèle Robert, Bastien Lepage's cousin, the face is said to be a composite of two local girls. In correspondence with his close friend, novelist and poet André Thurier, he detailed his excitement of having found the right face. I think I have found a head for my Jeanne d'Arc, and everybody thinks she expresses well that resolution to set out, while keeping the charming simplicity of the peasant. Also, I think the attitude is very chaste and very sweet, as it ought to be, in the figure that I want to represent. The young woman's left arm is outstretched, and her hand, dark with soil, holds onto a leaf. Her exposed bare foot is almost clenched into the soil beneath, both details suggesting that she is trying to ground herself in nature during this arresting moment. A clue as to what has transfixed Joan comes from the apparition of three figures on the left of the painting. Floating and rendered as semi-transparent, we see the Archangel Michael in gold military attire, St. Catherine and St. Margaret. Their faces are obscured by foliage and their forms blend into the dwelling behind them with translucent paint marks and faint suggestions of smoke. These figures constitute the young woman's vision, a mystical communion that will lead her to change the course of her life. Their poses may also be read as symbolic of Joan's eventual fate from military warrior to executed martyr. Joan is presented as a figure existing between two worlds, a simple peasant girl working in the earthly settings of her family garden and a devout and rebellious heroine connected to the divine and supernatural. Bastien Lepage goes to great effort in rendering fine details of the foliage, trees and shrubbery and was informed by a careful study of the region's plant life and it is said to be based on his own family garden. The colour palette is muted, warm and earthy. This commitment to capturing the naturalism of the scene in terms of detail, light and colour makes the otherworldly apparition of the saints all the more arresting, evocative and surprising. The painting is both a landscape and portrait and it can be also viewed as a historical, supernatural and religious painting. 
Unfortunately, when Bastien Lepage exhibited this painting at the 1880 Salon, it received mixed reviews. There were those who praised it for a sympathetic and lifelike portrayal of a young Joan of Arc, and in particular her facial expression that conveyed a delicate supernatural awakening. Tourier would say of this, never had Bastien Lepage created a figure more poetically true than this Laurent Shepherdess, so pure, so human, so profoundly absorbed in her heroic ecstasy. Some also appreciated the realistic details of the setting, but there were those who heavily criticised the inclusion of floating apparitions within a naturalistic painting. Disappointed by this, Bastien Lepage soon left France and moved to England. Because of this reception, the painting failed to be bought by the French state and instead was purchased by American businessman Erwin Davis. Having gifted this painting to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, this is currently where the painting resides and can be viewed in person today.